Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about swapping out an old MTK detector that has a side mounted in gray reed switch and replacing it with a new bottom mount brown wired MTK detector. It's got a different style lead off as well. So we're going to talk about how to swap out the MTK detectors, then how to patch in this new reed switch with the cable that is still attached from the old NTK detector and leading out to our bar. As you can see, this is just for training purposes, so I'm not hooked up to any lines um, or, or running any pressure anywhere. But before you do any of this work, it's important to remember that you flush out the line. So you empty it, essentially. So we're going to get rid of any liquid and any pressure in the line. So the, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to untap the keg running to this line and then run up to your bar and I just put it into prime and just hit the start stop button and you're just going to empty out that line so you'll hit start stop liquid will start to pour out the liquid in here will start to drain down and then once it hits there your line will be empty when the rest of it has been pushed out at the bar from there you'll hit stop on the circuit board you'll come back to your cooler and you want to cut off the gas supply to your beer pump and then go back up to the bar and open up your line in prime mode and that'll bleed off any excess pressure so that way you get any liquid and any pressure out of the line there will still be some drops that'll come through as we loosen up these parts but to prevent any massive blowouts and major messes in your cooler empty the line first an overview of the tools that you're going to need for this process uh, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a large crescent wrench to get these nuts, beer nuts off. You're going to need some wire strippers, so we'll be stripping back some of these cables. You're going to need some channel locks, some Nipex pliers. You're going to have your uh, telephone splicers that we provide. That's how we connect the uh, reed switch cables. And you're also going to need either a 5 16 or a quarter inch nut driver to uh, remove the nuts that are on the back of the MTK detector. All right, so if you have your line flushed out and you got your tools handy, let's, let's go ahead and remove our connectors, connections to the old MTK detector first. There is a little beer washer inside each of these connections, so make sure those don't drop out. Obviously, they're going to be a little tighter for you out there in the field. There we go. And so the reason that we do these connections first is that they're attached to hoses, and you can kind of push the hoses out of the way as you work on this. So now, we're going to remove the MTK detector from the panel. So you see that there are two bolts back there. And I believe these are the quarter inch size. Uh, if you have an older style system, they'll be quarter inch size. And the 5 16 are more common on newer styles. So you'll just Drive those out. And it'll allow you to pull the into keg detector free. Just move that out of the way. It is worth noting that the top of your empty keg detector here for your drain valve will still be connected. So before it can be removed, you'll just press down, pop out the little tube there, and then you'll be free to move this out of the way. Okay, so now you can just put your new anti keg detector in place. Like that. Use our drills the bolts back in. And then making sure our connections are good here. We got still have the beer washer in there.
nice and snug. And you'll just get that till you can't go on it. Make sure not to tighten it too much, potentially break that connection. Same with this bottom piece here. Finger tight. Give it a good until it's nice and snug and you can't go on it. So that's how you swap out the EKDs. But the important thing to note here is that we have a side mounted reed switch from the old system. So you can just pull that out and you can just throw this guy out of the way. You don't have to literally throw it. So you see that A, we've got two different types of connections here, two different switches. So the old one went to the side. Our new style here is at the bottom. And so what we're going to be doing, so this current gray line from the old one is hooked up to a junction box in your cooler right now. So fortunately, the only thing that we have to do is splice this brown wire together with the gray wire. So it's important to note that the uh, wires themselves will match up just fine. The, this style of reed switch will not fit in the new style port. So just a note on that. So how do we connect these two? We're gonna be taking your wire cutters here. And the first thing you need to do is there should be a pretty good amount of slack on your gray wire still. Um, but I'll just play it safe and just kind of clip barely by that reed switch. Then you're going to take your wire cutters here and pull off a good couple inches of that top of that outer sleeve. So we want to expose. The red and black wires inside this cable. There we go. Just like that. And so I always leave some extra slack too on the old one because you can always kind of tuck it away. So you don't want to run out or be too short. So I do about the same on this one, just very gently. So you see we have a red and a black, and a red and a black. So what we're gonna do is connect these two by using our telephone splicer. So you see that they've got, there's three ports on those. And what we're gonna be doing is feeding one. So we're gonna be feeding two in there. So just to fill two ports, Just like that, and then you're going to take your channel locks and push firmly down on that red button there and make sure it's pushed all the way down. Then we're going to repeat the process with our red wires as well. One per port. pop down on that so see it's nice and flat so our new empty detector has been put on we exposed some of the wires here and successfully spliced them together and so now with this just how it is um, head up to your bar and make sure that the empty keg lights are flashing on that line if you have the dispenser in auto start and if your empty keg lights are flashing, that means you have successfully spliced these together. That means that the float and reed switch system is working just fine. So I also mentioned that you would need a Phillips screwdriver. And so that was just to show you the bottom 
here in case you ever have to swap out um, this reed switch in here for a new one in the future. All it takes is the Phillips screwdriver there. And it'll pop out. So it's important to note that this beer nut here needs to be, the flat edge needs to be against where that screw pops out. Because if these angles are sticking out, that screw won't be able to move. So it just kind of tucks up in there like that. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about how that's starting to stick there. So what you'll do is you could loosen ever so slightly. You don't want liquid to come flying out there. It's, it's still getting stuck. You might have to back off quite a little bit to get that to happen. But So that is just a, a, a note. If you're going to swap out that whole reed switch, it doesn't hurt to kind of empty the line out. There we go. I'd really take it off there. But, so that's where that lives. And then, say if you were to get a new reed switch in the future, um, you would do this same ordeal of just cutting connections here, put your new reed switch on, and just repeat the process of connecting the red wires with the black wires. That's how you successfully swap out an older style side-mounted empty keg detector and not only replacing it with a new bottom-mounted empty keg detector, but splicing the old and new style reed switch cables together.